Video six, making inferences, starts on page eight in your 4B packet. The first three questions you see here are the problem of the day. They're a quick review of some material. I'd like you to do those on your own and we'll go over those in class. So on to the next page, making inferences. As you can see, this is in your textbook, chapter nine, section five, page 222, volume B. Um, compare the medians of two populations with the same measure of variation. So the weights of the players on two football teams are summarized in the box plots. Team A and Team B. Show that the two teams have the same measure of variation, that is, the difference between the three quartiles, and the same interquartile range. Okay, so let's look at this information. So quartile two minus quartile one of team A. The median of quartile two is 240, quartile one is 230, so the difference in those weights is 10 pounds. Let's look at team B. Team B's median is 230 minus their quartile one, which is 220, so there is a difference of 10 pounds. So quartile two to quartile one are 10 pounds spread. Let's look at quartile three minus quartile two. Team A, 250 minus 240 is also a 10 pound spread. Team B, 240 is the quartile three minus the quartile three of 230, a 10 pound spread. So their interquartile range for team A would be, and the interquartile range as a review is quartile three minus quartile one, highest quartile minus lowest quartile, not overall range, interquartile range. So that 250, minus 230 for team A, well, that has a 20-pound spread. Interquartile range, again, quartile 3 minus quartile 1 for team B is 240 minus 220, which is also a 20-pound spread. So express the difference in the median weight in terms of the interquartile range. So their spreads are the same, 10 pounds in each of the middle 50%. So 10, express the difference in the median weight. Well, the median weight, the median for team A is 240, right? quartile two, which is the median, that's 240. And for team B, the median was 230. Their difference is 10. Well, isn't 10 half of the interquartile range? So their difference is 10 pounds, which is Ten pounds, which is half half of the interquartile range, which I'm going to abbreviate as the IQR, which was 20 pounds. So the median is the center or the middle of the middle 50%. So the median is half. of the middle 50%, because that's what interquartile range is, the middle 50%. Then the next question, part C, you can see that I've already answered here, just to save some time so you're not spending so much time watching me write. So it, um, you can pause the video or start writing as I'm speaking. What inference can you draw about the weight distributions of the players of the two teams? Well, the weight distribution of the two teams is very uniform. All four quartiles, 
of the same are the same size for team a they're all ten pounds apart and the first three of team b are also ten pounds apart only the fourth quarter tile in team b as a little longer than ten pounds so they have very uniform distribution weight team b again has a fifteen pound from quartile three to the upper extreme there. So as it says here, the weight distribution of the two teams are very uniform, same, equal, ten, approximately 10 pounds for each of those. Uh, question number two, another example. The ages of two groups of children are summarized in these box plots, group one and group two show that the two groups have the same measure of variation, that is the difference between the quartiles, and the same interquartile range. Okay, well, they look very different, not as much like the football team A and B, but we can still see that they have the same measure of variation. So for group one, quartile three, uh, or quartile two, I'll start there, quartile 2 minus quartile 1, so the median minus the first quartile, 10 minus 8, well, that's a range of two ages or two years. Quartile 3 minus quartile 2 is 11 minus 10, which is a range of one year, and the interquartile range for group 1 would be 11 minus 8, which is three-year span. Okay, let's look at group two. Group two, quartile two minus quartile one, the median of 12 minus the first quartile of 10. Oops, not 110, 10. Has a two-year range, just like group one. Quartile three minus quartile two is 13 years minus 12, which has a range of one year, just like group one. And the interquartile range of group two is 13 minus 10, which is a three year. So yes, their boxes, the box part, the interquartile range, their middle 50% spans three years for both groups. Their difference in their quartiles, two years and one year for both groups. So what inference or what conclusion can you draw about the age distributions of the children in these two groups? Well, the distributions of the middle 50%, the interquartile range, of each group are the same. So the distributions of the middle 50%, which is the interquartile range, of each group are the same. Right, there, it's three years, so they're the same. Group two has a greater range overall, their overall range, 14 down to seven, they have a range of seven years, whereas group one only has a range of 13 down to seven, six years. So yes, group two has an overall uh, greater range and obviously has older children in it. So that's another inference that I can make. Group two, or another conclusion looking at my two box plots, has a greater age range and older children. Older children because their median is older, 12, their first quartile matches the median of group one, and their upper extreme, 14, is older than group one, which is only 13. So they must have older kids in them. 
Let's look at the next two populations or the next two box plots, the next example here. A class of students completed two science tests. The scores are presented in the box plots. Find the median and range of each test. Okay, so test one, the median, which I'm going to just abbreviate as MED. Test one, the median is 50. The range, the range, which I'm going to abbreviate as the R, is 95 minus 5. The range is 90. Test 2, the median, the slash there is 55, and the overall range, uh, 90 minus 10 would be 80. So the range is 80. Which test has a wider spread of data? Well, test one does. Has a larger range, right? Has test one has a wider range. And it has a, a larger interquartile range too. I'm going to abbreviate that IQR because their interquartile range test one, that IQR is 65 minus 35, that's 30. And test two's IQR is 70 minus 45, which is 25. So test one has a wider range and a larger interquartile range. So they have a wider spread of data. I can see that the box plot looks longer across the number line there. On which test did the class perform better? Well, if I look at quartile ones and compare, test two, they did better on. If I look at the median, test two has a higher median. If I look at quartile three, uh, test two has a higher quartile three. However, test one does have a score that's uh, an upper extreme that's a little higher, but overall, the quartile one, quartile two, and quartile three. So I'm going to write that quartile one, quartile two, and quartile three are higher on test two. So I think the class performed better. So the class performed better on test two. That, that, I'm not going to write that, but yes, they performed better on test two. Quartile one, two, and three are higher. And the last question. Two classes took a math test. The results are summarized in the box plots. For which class are the data more spread out? Um, well, class A has a smaller range. Class A has a greater range. 95 minus 24 is 71. Class B has a range of 65. 87 minus 22. Hopefully I did that right. Um, but the interquartile range of class B, class B has an interquartile range of 40. Versus only an interquartile range of class A of 24. It's about 70 minus 46, which is 24. Although class A does have a little bit bigger range, but I would say that class B, because of that middle 50%, because the interquartile range is so much greater, 24 versus 40, and the ranges are only six apart, I would say uh, class B has data that's more spread out. Class B, because their interquartile range is much greater.
Um, comment on the performance of the two classes. So make a conclusion or an inference. Overall, class A performed better. That's a conclusion I can see. They have a higher median and a higher uh, lower extreme and a higher upper extreme. Overall, class A performed better. Why? Higher median, I'm going to call it quartile two, higher uh, lowest extreme, LE, and higher upper extreme, UE. And that's it for today.